This week on Houston Newsmakers, first-term Congressman Dan Crenshaw. He's back home in the district for his first summer vacation. After his first seven months in Congress, how's it going so far? And what are his plans for the second congressional district? And you'll meet Johnny Taylor. No, not the philosopher of soul. This Johnny Taylor is running for the job of mayor of Houston. Why, he says he can pull off the upset on this special edition of Houston Newsmakers. From KPRC Channel 2, this is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. Good morning. Welcome to Houston Newsmakers. Congressman uh, Crenshaw, thank you for joining me. Hey. Last time you were here was before you were going into Congress. Now that you've been there for a little while, uh, what has the experience been compared to what you had expected it would be? That's the number one question I get, and I haven't come up with a great answer yet. You know, it's always, what surprises you the most? Um, I, I will say I, I, wasn't, I wasn't totally surprised by what I see in Washington. I, I did work on the Hill for a little bit, right. so I had some idea of what I was, what I was getting into. Um, I also had a pretty, pretty good idea of, of, of what it would be like to be in the minority. You know? So I, I knew that we weren't going to be able to pass uh, all the legislation that, that I'd ever dreamed of. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't get some things done. Um, I've, been, I've been blessed to be able to work, uh, for instance, across the aisle with, on the Homeland Security Committee. Mm -hmm. um, on a, I'm a ranking member on, on one of the subcommittees, and the, the chairwoman is, is great to work with. So there are, there are things we can get done, and more importantly, there are ways to work with the administration to get things done for, um, for uh, the flooding issues that Houston faces, so working with FEMA and the Army Corps of Engineers. You, you should mention that. I was going to talk about this later, but since you brought it up, uh, about FEMA and about your role with Homeland Security, I understand that this past week the uh, administration announced their plans to take some money from the budget that was going toward disasters, which FEMA does, and putting yep. it into the category for the border. Yep. Uh, your thoughts about that? I know the mayor uh, was not happy about that because it was taking money away potentially from disaster relief. Sure. Well, the mayor's letter was not correct, and that, and that needs to be put on the record. So the, the, what the mayor said was that it's taking away from our ability to recover from Hurricane Harvey. That is totally not true. People need to understand that. That is completely false. Uh, what is true is that if, if there was another disaster, FEMA would have less to, to immediately respond. Of course, Congress can quickly uh, put a supplemental appropriations bill uh, for any kind of disaster that comes up. So that could easily be fixed. Uh, it does not affect any of the recovery or any of the money that has already been appropriated for Harvey. It doesn't affect that at all, um, which, which is what the, that letter indicated. Uh, that money, is, people need, we need to back up a few steps and understand the background of, of why this is happening. So in the $4.6 billion humanitarian aid bill that, that finally passed out of the, out of, out of the Congress um, uh, not too long ago, that didn't have any extra space for ICE to actually hold people and adjudicate their claims. Okay, so there was no extra detention beds given for that bill, mm -hmm. which means that when illegal immigrants come over, they just get caught and released. They get released into the public, and we hope that they'll show up for a court hearing. And this is both, this is both people who are claiming asylum and not claiming asylum. And that's it, been that way for a long time. It's been that way for, for a long time, and, and sometimes our system can absorb it, but when there's so many numbers coming across, uh, we, we just can't. And we have to get, we, we've long struggled to get a hold of this. I mean, do we enforce our laws or not? It's, 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 it's a really fundamental mental question and um, you know Republicans say yes we do enforce them and the only way to enforce them is to actually hold people who have broken the law and adjudicate their claim whether that's a 1325 illegal crossing claim or an asylum claim if they're claiming asylum let's adjudicate it let's see what the evidence is if they have a valid asylum claim they're in uh, but if they're not they have to be sent back um, the way the system works now is everybody's in, no matter what, <laughs> and that's, that's not a system at all. Okay, so the only way to fix that is to have actual more detention space. So, some of this money goes towards that, but most of the money actually goes towards nonprofits um, th that need to be reimbursed after they leave DHS custody. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's another detail that's being left out of this. And what's the challenge of having that conversation devoid of the emotion that's surrounding this topic? Because it really is a hot button issue, and it's difficult to have a conversation, sit there and have a logical conversation, just take the emotion out of the, t out of the conversation. Challenging, isn't it? 
It's extremely challenging. That, that's, that's the ultimate American question we have right now, which is how do you have nuanced policy discussions without any emotion, without, without twisting of the facts and details, just to make your point? Like you said about the letter that the mayor wrote, it didn't say directly that there was taking funds, but the innuendo throughout it indicated that that was, yeah. that was what the process yeah, it, was. So it, it was, I think kind it was of more, than, more than innuendo. Yeah, yeah it was like, <laughs> exactly. And we, we don't need to do that. You know, I mean, you can make a good argument, and, and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fair criticism to say that, okay, FEMA doesn't have this amount of money in case of future disasters. Okay, that's fair. Mm -hmm. We can absorb that, but then prior, but I think we should still prioritize the current uh, disaster we have on the immigration issue, okay, and because that all falls under DHS. And so, and so uh, repurposing funding within DHS, I, I think, is perfectly reasonable, and especially because if we did have another hurricane, Congress can quickly appropriate funding for that. And so. now all of that's with the backdrop of the pressure, the fighting that was going on with the wall and declaration of a national emergency, mm -hmm. I'm going to get the money, I'm not going to get the that's money. That's where all the emotion comes right. from. I mean, that's why the conversations, which which could, pro in, in different circumstances, something like this wouldn't even make the news. Have you run into anybody who would say, ah, this is not really a real problem on the border? I bet on Congress you can't find anybody on either side of the aisle who says, everything's fine. Well, oh, can you? I th well, th that's an interesting question. I, mean, because, I ask interesting questions. <laughs> because y y y for a while you could, right? So for a while the narrative was there's no crisis. This is a manufactured crisis. Remember we heard that mm -hmm. over yeah, and yeah. over and over again. Yeah. So, we, so yes, the answer would be literally everybody who's a Democrat would say, there's nothing to see here. What are you talking about? Okay. Then it became a crisis that was created by Donald Trump, okay? So the, the narrative rapidly changed. So that's, then that's the conversation that we had. There are, there are actually quite a few Democrats who will say we shouldn't have a border with our allies. So they actually are, they are they're fundamentally open border um, advocates. Others will say, no, no, we, we have borders, but we want to decriminalize illegal crossings. We don't want any infrastructure on the border. We don't want any detention space, so we don't want to actually enforce the law. Uh, we don't want to hold people after they've crossed. So to me, I'm saying, okay, you're saying you're not for open borders, but effectively you are advocating for open borders because when you, when you advocate for those policies, that, those are open border policies. And, um, and they, don't, they, they don't get any closer to actually in, implementing law and order in, a, in an actual system of managed inflows okay which would uh, which is what we're asking for we do you talk about any of this stuff on your individual uh, social medias when you put out information and when you vote a certain way you talk about mm -hmm. why you vote and whatever can people go to your stream and oh, yeah. see your your in-depth conversations about that yeah yeah well, you know we did a I did a whole I, I built the documentary myself uh, when I went down to the border uh, on the Rio Grande Valley and we, we documented everything we saw down there and I just did that again uh, in El Paso uh, we haven't released that video yet we're still editing it but it just I just want to bring people into the conversation I want to show them let's this is this is what a facility looks like right this, this is this is what the border wall looks like this is what it looks like when it's when it's by the Rio Grande I mean you know this is what it does and this is what it doesn't you know here's talking to some experts so how soon before we see that, you think? Uh, well, within the week. Okay. Within the week. We're almost, we're almost done with that. Well, we've got more to talk about. I, I want to try to get a lot more in, but we get into this, and yeah. with good reason. It's good stuff to talk about, but we're going to talk about more with Congressman uh, Crenshaw after the break, including the Trump effect. What impact has the president's policies had, the congressman's support or non-support for any of them, and what it means for the 2020 election when Houston Newsmakers continues.